Before we begin, at a few points in the service, you'll see a countdown clock like this. Uh, if you're on the live stream at those points, we encourage you to use the comments. At other points in the service, just judge if your comment adds to the service or not. If you're on catch up when you see the countdown timer, you may want to skip ahead. Let's jump in. Good morning and welcome to our service. Whoever you are, wherever you are, and whoever you are with, you are so welcome to join our service this morning. Um, my name is Sharon Blair and I am Associate Minister here at Holy Trinity in Coombe Down and also at St Andrews on Fox Hill. Um, we have been looking at the theme of choosing joy. And it's been such a great theme for um, these times that we're in at the moment. And many people have appreciated, I think, the, um, the idea of choosing joy over the fear and anxiety and worry that uh, this pandemic has caused. So we do hope that you, are, you will experience some of that joy today. Claire Morris, our children's minister, will be talking to us later on about surrendering to the Lordship of Jesus and choosing his joy. Let's pray together. Jesus, no matter what's going on around us at the moment, whether the washing machine's making funny noises, whether the children are playing noisily, whether your partner or friend in the house with you keeps annoying you by butting in, Lord Jesus, we would just love right now to feel your gentle presence with each one of us. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Um, if you've had a birthday during August, we would like you to put that on the chat now. And uh, after our few minutes of chat where we all say hello, uh, then we will sing you happy birthday. Sorry, can't give you a chocolate, but if there are any chocolates lying around in your house, do <coughs> treat yourself and grab yourself one. And also, I would like to know who is your superhero. Your superhero could be your parents, it could be your teacher, it could even be your vicar, or it could be your children's worker, it could be your auntie, it could be Batman, it could be Wonder Woman. Who is your superhero? Put that in the chat, along with if you've had a birthday in August.
Happy birthday to you. We're so glad God made you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. We're so glad God made you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Here's some things that you need to know. Uh, week today, we're going to start experimenting with our Sunday services, having um, a mix of some elements being live. And so um, if you're someone that watches the service on catch-up, it won't be available on Saturday night anymore, um, as, as it will be a recording of what's actually happening on Sunday morning. And so you may want to as well be in the church building for this as, as things develop. As we're at the beginning of a new school year, um, every year we get fresh registrations for children and youth, and it's never been easier to register your child. If you go on the website at the top, um, there's under groups, um, there's a, a link there, um, which takes you to a page and then you just click on your child's group and fill in um, some of the various boxes very quick and easy. I just did both of my children, just took a few minutes. We've had a lovely project recently called The Bible at Bedtime. Um, each episode of The Bible at Bedtime is only up for a month, um, and it's where we've got some of the seniors of our church reading, um, reading um, bedtime Bible stories uh, to children. And so we're about to finish um, recording all the different episodes for the Old Testament, and we'll start the New Testament soon, but realize that each episode is only available for a month. And so you may want to check that out. La 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 In every move I make, I'm making you. You make me move, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. Every step I take, I take in you. You are my way, Jesus. Every breath I breathe, I breathe in you. Every move I make, I'm making you. You make me move, Jesus. Every breath I take, I breathe in you. And maybe we might be able to find an unlikely hero in you. Uh, yeah. Now, because of COVID, we obviously couldn't have a holiday club physically this year, but Claire um, and many of the other children's workers from the other churches in Bath got together and prepared one which we could watch online and it brought an awful lot of joy to many people. It's called Unlikely Heroes, so do you get the, you know, why I wanted you to put in heroes um, on the chat. Um, we're going to join in with the joy that Holiday Club brought by together singing the Holiday Club song. Now this is performed by our very own musical heroes, Dan and Lydia, and um, it's got quite a few actions with it. And we'd like you all to join in with the actions. Yes, that is all of you. Children, I'd like you to see um, who does the best actions in your family. The rest of you, I'd like you to join in and you'll probably get them wrong and it'll look funny and I would like you to laugh and have, have some joy to be brought out of doing an action song either well or badly. Um, so, however you do them, enjoy. Let's sing. La 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 Be an unlikely hero, show love in all you do If you feel that you're worth zero, God says that's just not true Jesus loves you La 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 
啦啦啦啦啦啦。God made the world and He made you and me. Made us with love to be the best we can be. You don't have to be cool. Be the brains of the school. Run fast, swim fast, champion at gym class. That is what you gotta do. That's just not true. Jesus loves you. La 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 la. A beauty contest for Queen Esther. She did win, but God had her in place to save His people. Jesus loves you. La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 la. Father, we welcome you into our presence again today. Thank you for being our Father. Thank you for making a way for us in these difficult times. Even in this pandemic, Lord, you were there. In our hardship and in our uncertainty, Lord, you were there. In your word, you've said, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face hardship, because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And let perseverance finish its work so that you may be made mature and complete, not lacking anything. We know we can cast all our cares upon you, so we choose to follow your ways. We choose to follow life in you. Amen. Father, as we come to the end of the summer holidays, we pray for all those returning to school, for staff and pupils. Thank you for the efforts already made in preparation for the opening up of the schools and we ask for your protection in the coming weeks and months. We pray especially for all those in our own church community working hard to ensure the safety of the children in their care, and we ask that by your Holy Spirit, you would give them discernment, strength, and a sense of your peace as the term progresses. We pray for parents who may be anxious about their children returning to school, that they would be filled with your joy and peace as they put their trust in you. We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we bring before you countries facing humanitarian crises caused by armed conflict, disease epidemics and natural disasters. And we pray particularly for countries where 6% of the world's population is resulting in 74% of displaced people and refugees. We pray, Lord, for our own opportunities to show compassion and care for those in distress, that we'll take responsibility for what we can contribute more than leaving it to others or the government to meet every need. We pray for wisdom for our own politicians and for others in leadership, in education, the health service and in the economy. We pray, Lord, that you'll raise up leaders of extraordinary vision and integrity, godly men and women who can lead us out of this situation here and around the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, Thank you for the joy of knowing you and of being known by you. As we learn to trust you more each day, we pray we would be able to enjoy where you have placed our feet. Help us not to wish we were somewhere else, but simply to rest in your presence. We pray especially for those for whom choosing joy right now is not easy. Help us to be aware of those finding it difficult and to be a part of their comfort that they might know what it is to feel completely loved by and embraced by you. May we be your fragrance at this time. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 
Before we go back into worship, I'd very briefly like to just tell you about the Alpha course, which finished on Thursday. We had such a great uh, 10 or 12 weeks. Um, everybody seemed to really enjoy coming and they all seemed to get on so well, even though it was on Zoom. Now, many people from the church were praying, so many were praying, and I'm sure it made a huge difference because the Lord answered those prayers in so many ways. Um, it's so lovely to be able to tell you that two or three have become followers of Jesus for the first time, and the rest of us who were there, including the team, have all grown closer to Jesus in our walk with him. So what a cause for joy. And can you imagine the party in heaven that's going on this week to celebrate? Um, please pray for protection for each one of those who've come to know Jesus. Please pray that the Lord protects their fledgling faith and that uh, nothing is snatched away from them and that they just continue to grow in their love for Jesus and their knowledge of the Bible and that the Holy Spirit keeps filling up them up every single day so that they stay close to Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, we just love the excitement of people coming to faith, the joy it brings to us, to you and to them. Thank you. Thank you for answering our prayers for each one of them and keep your protective hand on them, we pray, that none of them will be lost. And as we worship you now, help us to lift your great and glorious name in adoration. May we lose ourselves in you, just to be able to concentrate on you, allowing your Holy Spirit to fill our hearts and minds in praise of who you are and of what you do for each one of us. Thank you, Lord. Setting sun, 
His love endures forever By the grace of God we will carry on His love endures forever So sing praise
every soul you saved sings out everything you made resounds all creation standing now lifting up your name we're caught up in the It's your breath in our lives. 
Thank you that you bother with us. Thank you for your presence with us. Amen. That was great, wasn't it? Now one of the Davis family is going to read to us. And then after that, um, Claire will be preaching. Today's reading comes from 4 Philippians, verse 4 to 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, and with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Hello everyone and welcome to St Andrew's Church this morning. If you don't know me, my name is Claire and I have the privilege of being the children's minister both here at St Andrew's and at Holy Trinity. I was really missing toddler group which we have here at St Andrew's and the beautiful banner that hangs in the main hall and I thought I'd come and do my preach to get away from my noisy boys in St Andrew's with the banner behind me. But this is the only place in the building with decent light. So we'll have to put the banner there by magic. Before I begin, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your great words in this passage today. And I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, nothing I have prepared will get in the way of the work of your Son, Jesus Christ, in our hearts and minds this morning. Amen. Well, what a treat to preach on this passage from the end of Philippians. It's always been one of my favourites. But before I do, I want us to just recap on this series that we have had, Choosing Joy. I don't know about you, but I've really enjoyed it because we've had such golden nuggets of truth about joy this summer. And I want to tempt you to explore any that you've missed on YouTube. So Sean started off by exploring the joy that is innate in the Trinity, part of the very nature of God. Then Matt brought us the first dip into Philippians, looking at joy despite chains. Very appropriate if you've ever had a sort of lockdown feeling. And then Sean explained why James said we should consider our trials pure joy. I really needed to hear the bit in that sermon about perseverance. And then Lisa brought us our second part of Philippians and her image of how we find joy when we camp in the presence of God was great. Have you felt the warmth of the Holy Spirit campfire recently or the rain of God's blessings on your tent? And last week, Chris looked at one Peter with us and encouraged us to remember the joy of our new birth as Christians. So to paraphrase the opening of our passage today, rejoice! In the Lord always, you can watch it again, rejoice. So here we are at the end of the book of Philippians and Paul is summing up his final words of advice and encouragement to the early church. And it is here that we find some real keys to a joyful life of faith. As I prepared for today, God reminded me of some people that I have known who have really lived out the advice in this passage and have glowed with joy. And I want to share with you the stories of one of them, my friend Hilary. Here she is on the furs with me and my boys. I first met Hilary when I was at university. She and I were practical partners for our laboratory-based work. 
At uni, she was already in a wheelchair as she suffers with a degenerative illness. But she still had use of her arms when we were at university and she was able to drive a mobility car. And having a friend with a car was a real bonus in those days. And on one particular occasion, she was given a bright red, brand new Metro as her mobility car. And we decided to take it for a spin. And we drove up to Uffington White Horse Hill and parked at the top in the disabled car park. We got out for a walk, but there was a really stiff cold wind. And so we quickly got back into the car and picnicked in the car and chatted and giggled. And our conversation was interrupted by a rather sharp tap on the window. And a lady rather assertively asked us, did we realise that we were taking up a valuable parking space in the disabled car park? And Hilary really calmly pointed to her blue badge and her wheelchair in the back of the car and said, yes, that's, that's my wheelchair. The lady looked mortified, really embarrassed. And she said, oh, I'm so sorry. You looked too happy to be disabled. And that became a catchphrase between Hilary and I whenever life was a bit tough. Remember, you're too happy to be disabled. Hilary was a woman of faith and she exuded more than happiness. There was in her a deep joy, despite the challenging nature of her life and how frustrating it was to be in her body. It was a joy that was centred on her knowledge of Christ and of God's unquenchable love for her that she knew through Christ and his love for others that she wanted to share. I want to take you to another moment with Hilary. This was in our third year at university when she was far from looking too happy to be disabled. She was experiencing a very painful episode in her condition and I visited her at hospital. She wasn't completely conscious and she was groaning in pain. Um, and the hospital seemed to be at that stage at a loss as to the cause of this pain and as to how to relieve it. So I sat by her bed and I prayed. And to be honest, I was really struggling. Part of me was crying out for a miracle cure. And part of me was pleading that God would just take away the pain. And if that meant taking away my friend, you know, so be it. I'd let her go. I just could not stand the pain. This was my wrestling with God in prayer. Now I'm going to save how God answered that prayer until after we've looked at the passage. Keep you hanging in there. So let us unpick the passage together. Paul instructs us to rejoice in the Lord and it's so important he repeats it. In fact, Paul uses the word joy six times in this letter to the Philippians and he uses the word rejoice eight times. It is a key focus for his encouragement to his fellow believers. He is emphasising and reminding us what joy is and what reasons we have to rejoice. The main reason being Jesus Christ and all he has done to reconcile us to God, to reconnect us with God, our Heavenly Father. And Paul wants joy to characterise followers of Jesus. The thing about joy is it's really attractive. And we need to show joy to the world so that the world is attracted to Christ too. And Paul knew this and he didn't want us to forget it. So we move on to verse 5 and it's such a reassuring verse. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. So we have almighty Lord God close at hand. Jesus Christ himself near us. So we don't need to fight in our own power and in our own might. We can show gentleness. Gentleness, like joy, is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And it comes to us as a free gift when we choose to accept Jesus Christ as our saviour. We get to choose joy and gentleness from the chocolate box of Holy Spirit treats. And both are attractive characteristics and they should be characteristics that mark out Christians. That's all very well. It's not always easy to be joyful. In verse 6 and 7, we get the best advice ever. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, 
will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. In this verse, we see that Jesus Christ, if we let him, is so near that he will guard our hearts and minds. That is so the opposite of social distancing. It is intimate spiritual shielding. Jesus Christ himself guarding our hearts and our minds. In last week's reading, I don't know if you noticed it, one phrase jumped out at me. In 1 Peter 5, it says, you who through faith are shielded by God's power. You who through faith are shielded by God's power. Wow. I felt we needed that bit of that verse right now. Every time you put your face mask on, every time you wash your hands, turn that anxiety into prayer of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving because we have Jesus and Jesus is near and through him we have access to God's shielding power. I'm going to say that again. Every time you put your face mask on and wash your hands, turn your anxiety into thanksgiving to God because we have Jesus and Jesus is near and through him we have access to God's shielding power. In verse 8, we read a list of the whatevers. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Where whatever you have learned or received from me, that's Paul talking, or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. I was for 10 years a teacher of teenagers and when teaching teenagers you quite often get that whatever sort of look, if not the whatever miss words that go with it. And I found this passage was really key to my job as a teacher. If you look for the praiseworthy, the admirable and the positive thing in each individual pupil and you highlight it to them, That, in essence, is something called positive behaviour management. You wander around the classroom, you spot the good and you praise it. And it works wonders in the classroom. And it works because it works in the hearts and the minds of your pupils and it builds self-esteem. And if you're feeling good, your behaviour is good. However, as a teacher, you have to guard your heart and your mind from those arrows of negativity that come to you from teenagers. They're resisting authority, they can't help it, but you must guard your heart and mind so you're not pierced by those arrows of negativity and you can go on focusing and dwelling on the positive things and encouraging that in them. And it's that guarding of our hearts and minds that we need Jesus Christ to do for us, because it's tough. So this bit of advice is key. It is what helps us to choose joy. First of all, we have to choose what to think about. Now you can choose what to think about. That, as far as I can tell, and I'm no expert here, and I know we do have experts in the audience, is at the heart of cognitive behaviour therapy. I am no expert at all, but I did have a course of cognitive behaviour therapy, CBT, to help me climb out of an episode of clinical depression. And what I took from that was it is possible to concentrate on your thought patterns and to recognise positive ones and negative ones and to reject the negative ones and to focus on the truth of the positive thought patterns. And that is what Paul is asking us to do here. It's not an easy thing to do, especially not if you're depressed. But over time, you can learn to do it and it does work. And Paul is giving us that same instruction. He is telling us what to think about, but we are not doing this in our own strength. We are inviting Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit to guard our hearts and our minds and to steer our thoughts. And this is how we find what we can rejoice in. Paul's whatevers are a theosaurus list of good and positive things to think about. His first two I find a little bit unhelpful in our age. Working out things to think about that are true is not always easy when we're living in this era of fake news. And thinking about noble things I also find a bit distracting because it's not actually thinking about the royal family. No, 
Noble things in this instance are things that show good character, righteous things. So each day we need to reflect and dwell on the thoughts of the things that have happened that day, looking for those that are praiseworthy, excellent, admirable, lovely, pure, right, noble and true and dwelling on those. Now, if you're struggling for a truth to dwell on, ponder on the one truth that the Bible shouts from beginning to end. God loves you. God loves you. As the Holiday Club song says, if you think you're worth zero, God says that's not true. Jesus loves you. So let's go back to Hilary's bedside. She suddenly came to and she said, Claire, you're praying. I hope you're thanking God. Well, I was a bit shocked at that response because that was far from what I felt I was doing. I thought, gosh, the pain relieving drugs are certainly having some effect. And I replied, no, I wasn't really thanking him. You seem to be in, in so much pain. And she replied, yes, she said, but lying here, I am seeing the very best of people. They come into this room and they show me such great love. That is worth thanking God for. Hilary had this ability to focus on a true and noble aspect of a very hard trial. God healed her miraculously of that particular episode of pain. The hospital found a growth, which they thought was an abscess, on her spine, and they planned an operation, although it was a considerably risky operation, to remove that. But on the morning of the op, when they scanned her just to make sure they were in the right place, the growth had gone. It could not be found. God answered our prayers with a miracle for Hillary on that occasion. The last time I saw Hillary was in a London hospital in May 2018. Hillary's illness was producing in her body horrible spasms over which she had no control. And she'd been in hospital for quite a few weeks and there seemed to be no way of getting her body under control. And we talked together and it was horrible to see her literally being thrown around in her body. But she was still completely in control of her mind and her thoughts. She had questions about my life, about you and her godson's life. And we had a very positive conversation. I expressed how sorry I was that she was stuck in hospital and had been for so long. And her response was another one that blew me away. I've worked out why I'm here, Claire, and why I've been here so long, she said. God wanted me to meet my roommate. In a hospital room, there was another young woman. Hillary used her name, but I won't do that. We've had such great conversations, Claire. She doesn't know Jesus. And I've been telling her all about him, Hilary said. That's why God has put me here for so long, because she needs his hope. Hilary died in August 2018 and will be remembered for the world as an amazing quadriplegic sailor. Look her up on YouTube. She gets more views than I ever will. But I will remember her for her faith and her ability to find reasons to rejoice in the Lord. Always. God gave her a peace that transcended my understanding and from it flowed a deep joy that was so attractive. I want it too. So I am willing to try every day to surrender to Jesus Christ and allow him to guard my heart and my mind. And I urge you to do the same. Because choosing joy is just that. It is surrendering your life to Jesus Christ and accepting that peace which passes all understanding and that access to deep joy. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not just advocating mind over matter here. I am saying let Jesus in. Let him guard your heart and your mind because you matter to God. Jesus is proof that you matter to God. And that is our reason to rejoice in the Lord always. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, God Almighty, thank you that you love us so much that we matter to you. Thank you for Jesus Christ. 
please help us choose joy. Help us choose to surrender to Jesus Christ, to invite him to guard our hearts and our minds. This day and always, may he be our intimate spiritual shield. And through Jesus Christ and all he has done, may we choose to accept the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Please fill us with joy. Please fill us with gentleness. And please let joy and gentleness be evident to all we meet. Because we choose, and may we always choose, to rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Claire. Claire's a bit of a wonder woman herself with all of the things she does for our children in our church and all that she does for um, the school and the school children. She really puts her heart and her efforts and her energy into so many things. So thank you for taking the time to preach to us today, Claire. And now let's just sit quietly in the presence of the Lord as we mull over and respond to what she said and to pray. Lord, we pray that you will guard our hearts and minds. Help us to choose the joy and peace that your Holy Spirit can give us today and to give you thanks in all and every situation we find ourselves in. Amen. And now let's sing together with joy in our hearts. Let's go. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquers the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquers the grave Worthy is the Lamb who was slain Worthy is the King who conquered the grave Worthy is the Lamb who slain Who breaks the power of sin and darkness Whose love is mighty and so much stronger The King of glory, the King above all kings With holy thunder Who leaves us breathless In all and wonder The King of glory The King above all kings This is amazing grace This is unfailing love That you would take my place That you would bear
so grateful to God for our tech team who put it all together. If you're moving into our area, do get in touch via our website. We'd love to chat with you and introduce you to what we do here at Holy Trinity and St Andrews. And also, if you're interested in Jesus that we've been talking about, then do look up an online Alpha course, which I'm sure will be starting very soon. Um, I want to close our service with a part of the passage that we've been looking at today. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, present your requests to God with thanksgiving. And the peace of God, which transcends all human understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Don't forget to grab a coffee or tea or even a post-church sherry or glass of wine and join in with one of the um, chat Zooms that we have going. So just click on the link and you'll see all the different ones that you can join in with. Um, and have a great week, particularly if you're starting back at school or at college, going to a university or your job's ramping up, you're going back into work. We just hope and pray that the Lord will go with you into whatever new situation is appearing. And finally, choose joy. <laughs>